Last week on KYD, we were in Mount Rainier National Park. Coincidentally, at the same time as the Dennis family. You might know Ronnie, the owner of Airstream Nuts and Bolts. It's a boutique Airstream repair and modification shop out of Alabama. We hiked the Skyline Trail together and Mark found it difficult to capture footage. I'm trying to get footage of this trail, but the problem is we're talking about onboard generators and ball valves for moving city water to fresh and Starlink connections yep. and uh, all sorts of solar stuff. It's kind of hard to uh, kind of hard to record the beauty. <laughs> You're talking shop. After the hike, we followed Ronnie and Tara out of the national park and grabbed some dinner at Cooper Creek Inn, which definitely hit the spot. What do you got there in the bag? Two pies. Two I pies. love that place. Two Their pies. milkshakes were insane. The portions were good. just right. Oh, oh wow. That's like a whole yeah. <laughs> There's a whole other one in there. All right. I made my, my way through a loaf of bread in there. It was so good. <laughs> Although Ronnie only services Airstreams, and some of these upgrades are specific to Airstream, most of the modifications you're about to see can be done on almost any towable RV. If you enjoy the technical side of RVs, mods, and upgrades, we hope you'll enjoy this casual walkthrough of Ronnie and Tara's Airstream Globetrotter. We're starting with a tour. Starting with a little baby tour. Let's we'll start with a little baby tour, and then let's go talk about some of these mods. Very yeah. interested in the hydraulic jack. Yep. I'm very interested in the uh, onboard generator. Yep. Go in, Trish. Go. No, that's okay. I can sit right here. You can go in. Look, look at me. I'm like look at dusty. Me. Watch. Okay, see my feet, and I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> look at these, the couches. I know. Look at this face. We'll go up in. Okay, 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 okay. I love this. Yeah, so the same, the, the switch underneath, the screen. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, that's it. Yep, I we had, we put that in the reflection. So that way you can, you could just have a knob to turn yeah, off. Yeah, you can just or, adjust your, you know, yeah. your current limit. You can yeah. flip the knob, the little switch if you need to. Gotcha. And it does okay. open. Whoa. Oh. 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 Oh wait, 3D printed. Do you guys have a 3D printer? Well, we bought them. Somebody 3D printed them for us. Oh wow, yeah. that's so cool. How cool is the mirror behind so you can see what's in your yeah, cabinet? Yeah, all of them are that way. Oh, so there's can... your stash. That's it. Yeah. Oh, that's your payday stash? Yes. Paydays today, baby. And look at this. Yeah, the mirror is fantastic. The, yeah, yeah, so you can see what's... Yes. The hinges look like... Uh... Yeah, the hinges are legit, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, this was a little mod I did on this cabinet because it didn't have lights, so there's a switch. So like when you open the door, the light comes on and you can see in there. Man, that's awesome. So those are LED strips? Yeah, it's just the LED strip. And you put those the in the back and you wired them yourself into the yeah. cable mm -hmm. with the little switch? Yeah. Those are so switch. bright, nice. Close it, you're good. When you open it, you got lights. I like so it. You can see. Wow. All right, so what's the model? Uh, this is a 30-foot Globetrotter. It's a 2020 year model. Okay. Uh, but it's a 30-foot Globetrotter. Okay. Fabulous. You know, it's got the sink covers and oh, all yeah, the stuff. Yeah, let's talk to... about this. First of all, huge sink. So much different. Mm -hmm. A lot of space. Still deep enough to do a pan. High enough to actually get things done. Then you have the trash. Amazing. And counter space right mm -hmm. where you need it. Where you, whether yep. you're drying or you're cooking. And then is that three burner? Three burner. And this is a cast iron upgrade. These are actually, the Dometic system comes with little bitty dinky wire grates. Yes. And we went with the Furion cast iron grates, which happen to fit the same hole. Okay. And what are these? Are these Corian? Corian. Corian, yeah, Corian countertop. Wow. And that's and then, OEM, right? OEM, yeah. yeah. Yeah, OEM on for the Globe Trotter model, it's OEM, uh, it's the Corian. This right here may look like it's little, but this is a lifesaver, right? Yeah, here. that this little, little curb edge. Curb. Yes. Where are you doing? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Oh, well, we're, I we're, to... we're not even done with the tour. Well, I just had to move, <laughs> move a trap. You know, well, you gotta come back. Ball, you gotta come I'm back. Rock and roll I'm, I'm, I'm finding things that, that you need to see. Well, babe, <laughs> he's I don't got think a list we wanted... of things he wants. Yeah, I didn't Tread think we wanted interest. to update our rigging. So you know, like I just got a taste, and I'm like, I gotta remove myself <laughs> because okay. I feel like I want to upgrade. Listen, yes. Um, Ronnie changes the foam in the seats. Really? Yeah. Sit down. Sit down. So this is tushy soft. Oh, well, it's, it's firm. It, exactly. So that you don't, you don't just sink. Yeah, you don't sink down and sit on the plywood. Yes, that's where stuff. we are at this point. Yes. Mark just trades spots by the I table do. so that we don't ruin them. Yes, hello, baby. Hello. So see our Starlink modem is. I see that. There. It's just, 
and it's stuck with museum putty. It rides. It's really? Just, you know, museum. I don't know if you're familiar with museum putty. Yeah. Where are your tweezers? Yeah. It makes a bed. You know, this space, and then the table actually has shorter legs that will drop down to make a bed also. But, wow. Yeah. I'll you, you know, it works pretty well. It's not a, not a very common one. I guess people would see, but the elongated bowl. Oh yeah. Toilet, so that's the Medic 310, so it's a residential, it really? residential elongated bowl toilet. It has a, uh, it has a lip, like a regular toilet has, so yeah. oh, water yeah. doesn't, when you're driving down oh, the road, not splash Oh, yeah. Right. I mean, that's so, kind of a, does that, oh, and, and the soft closed lid. Yeah, that's a Kohler soft closed lid. So, this is a soft closed lid that actually yeah. is, is it LED lit, yeah, so it's a, uh, it's a lit bowl. Well, that's pretty nice because, you know, one thing that Airstream has dimmers throughout the whole rig, but they don't put dimmers in the bathroom. Bathroom. So you get up in the middle of the light, go to the bathroom, you don't You're have to blinded. Yeah. Okay, so hold on. Let me ask you another question, though. We have a macerating toilet. Is that is that Dometic elongated? You can get the elongated in a macerator. You, you probably can. could, yes. Yeah, so the switch, you know that it's on when it's lit. So there's no risk of leaving your electric water heater on. I love that. When you're running your inverter. All right, then what do you got over here? Just storage? Sorry. Yeah, um, microwave. Oh, nice. So microwave pulls out here. I don't have um, pull out pull out pantry. Nice. You know, with all the stuff there, and then yeah, just storage. This and then toaster oven and stuff. And then big closet. This is kind of neat. This is the uh, 160 degree hinges, so they fall. Uh, oh most, yeah. Most cabinet doors only open about that far. Yeah. So these this allows them to come like that. on around, so you yeah. can get more uh, flow. Yeah. Through it. And then master in the back. Master in the back. Queen bed. Um, this is Drake's bed, so this is just a Hest um, inflatable. Yeah. It's like a paddleboard type material, inflatable paddleboard okay. type material. It makes it rigid. It's got a mattress on it, and it it happens to fit in the floor between our table and the thing. Really? So it lays back here, but this is his bed at night. Okay. Instead of having to make one of those out or do whatever, yeah. we just throw that thing there. And then just store it here. Yep. Grab handle. Oh. So you can mod that? Yeah. Yeah, I did that. Well. This one had to be machined down. Yeah. The acrylic had to be machined down two inches because the hole for the original handle was here and here, and I needed to cover the original holes yeah. up. So the, the the acrylic handle is longer than this, so I had to cut it shorter. Hey, while we're at the door, tell everyone about the mod for the handle. Yeah, so um, you know a lot of uh, people have problems with the handles on these things just breaking off. Yeah. You slam, slam the door, you hold the door in your hand, and next thing you know, boom, you just pulled it off, and now you're shut inside the trailer. So we actually drill and tap the back side of the handle and put a big washer on it and a stainless steel bolt and lock tight it on there so that you can't you can't pull the handle out of there. Yeah. So it works pretty good to be able to torque. Now, were these like things, were these locked and you added the little... Um... These, I added the thumb tabs. Yeah. yeah, they were locks. This is for the stabilizer jacks. Yeah. I never wanted to have to grab the keys to be able to... Same with the Opera. water. See, like yeah. I see you've got yeah, a lock got, on the water. I got one on the water. I can't stand it. So yeah, I add one of these. Yeah, just thumb lock. So yeah. that's the same thing. I just put the thumb lock on there. I put the thumb lock on the shower on the back side there too, because okay. if I'm around there and need to wash my hands with something or whatever, I don't have to find keys to open it up. So I just have a thumb lock on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I changed my outdoor shower to an outdoor water hose attachment. So I have hot and cold water back there. The the shower that's on the trailer is pretty Yeah, we never use it. It's crappy. It, yeah. The water just barely comes out of the end of it. So there's a a different I'll show you. Except now I have a oh. quick connect. It's still hot and cold water, but you get a full let me grab it, springy water hose attachment. Oh, it's just quick awesome. connect, so it just it connects and then you got hot and cold water. And you can actually put a water hose on here. Yeah. So what I do when I'm at home is I hook my trailer to city water. Yeah. I connect another water hose to this. I turn the hot water on, turn the hot water heater on, and wash my trailer with hot water. Right there from that? Yeah. Just from right here. Wow. Just use hot water to wash it with, and it's great because hot water cleans a lot better than, Man, the, that's fantastic. than the other. But yeah, it works great. You just, and, and then, and then you put a thumb tap on that deal mm -hmm. too? Yes, you don't yeah. have to get, find the keys. Exactly. All right, so you upgraded to the uh, the smart, smart plug. plug. I did on that, and the reason I did mainly was to match the Starlink plug. Okay. There. So you're saying the Starlink plug is a pretty easy mod? Yeah. yeah How difficult is it for those that, that aren't close to Alabama? <laughs> the, the only the only thing you have to be able to do to do the Starlink mod is you have to be able to make Cat5 connections. So you need the tools to crimp 
a Cat 5. Well, and cut through your, and be confident enough to cut, cut through, through the through side your, of your Airstream. Yeah, but the but the cable itself, the Starlink cable, you have to cut it. Okay. And it's Cat 5 cable, so then you, you have to make those connections. Gotcha. And you have to have a special crimp tool to make those connections. You, you can get probably it. have somebody at a at like a data doctor's type place go do that for you, though. Correct. Right? Yeah, they okay. would be able to make them up. Okay. Now, when you want to connect your Starlink, yeah. you just you just plug it in like that. And this is a, a special end that I get from... Um, Dell City. It's a it's a company that makes Ethernet connection stuff, but okay. it's waterproof. Oh, I see. And it cam locks, so it's got oh, three really? little it's got three little tabs. See the little yeah. tabs inside, yeah. and there's three little notches there. So when I line it up like this, you just stick it on, and then all you do is quarter turn it, and then it's water water. It's locked on there, and it's waterproof. And then to undo it, you just quarter turn it, pull it back off. Use the biggest thing is you have to use shielded. Cat 5 connectors. Okay. So this metal around them, you know, normally you see a LAN cable connection or yeah. whatever, it's just plastic. Yeah. The shielded cable um, is what Starlink uses, so you have to have this metal piece on here that, that shields the cable from any electrical interference. Because you have the hydraulic jack, you now have your actuator, is that what it is, that you keep yeah, down the in here? Yeah, the hydraulic pump is Hydraulic here. pump is okay. in there. There's some now, other stuff in there too. Because but. I moved to lithium and solar like you. Yep. I don't have you know, I, I don't have my batteries, my twelve volt, you know, lead acid batteries in there. So I use that for chocks well, and stuff and like I that. And I still store I keep a quart of oil for the generator. Okay. An extra quart of oil for the generator just in case. Okay. I keep um the hydraulic pump runs off automatic transmission fluid. Okay. So I keep a quart of automatic transmission fluid here yeah. just in case. And then I got my covers for my Pro Pride hitch in there. Gotcha. So now you're saying you carry some stuff in here? Sure. So, oh, so I have a... You made this? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. What is this made out of? It's made out of um, starboard. So it's like cutting board material. Yeah. This is, I mean, it's just beat up, but it's, yeah. it's just starboard material. But I mean, that's the same setup you have there. Yeah. And then all you do is you just cut a pattern, this pattern out of it. And now you have... Storage. Storage. I store all 10 of my leveling blocks in here. Three on this side, three on that side, and four in the middle. Really? And they all fit. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. Easy place to keep them. Okay, but then uh, the big the big thing here I want to talk about is this hydraulic pump. And there's only, you say there's only four of them? Yeah, there's only four. <laughs> I have one. Uh, Sean and Christy with Long Long Honeymoon have one, and then I have two customers that have them. Okay. And that's been the only four that I have fooled with installing uh, because they're kind of a pain to, to put on takes a takes a while you have to modify the battery box i don't know if you can see on mine the bottom of the battery box you actually have the hydraulic pump here okay. that that protrudes below okay the box. so you have to cut out a square section in the bottom of the box so the hydraulic pump will drop in because a pump is too tall okay for the box so you have to you have to make a, a spot and then when we do it i make it so that we can put the bottom back in if we ever needed to. We okay. need to go back. I don't ever want to do anything that we can't undo. Yeah, okay. So we always make it so that we can go back if we have to. So, um, you know, you got to cut that, you got to put the thing in, uh, put the pump in, and then you just have two hoses that... Gotcha. But this thing is, you know, hydraulic fast. Yeah. So no, well, no, you got your stabilizers down, don't you? I'll raise them. When he hears Jack's up, he thinks it is time to go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's funny. He's like, you're not leaving me. <laughs> yep, there he is again. Come on, load up. Load up. <laughs> now Daisy, she's the perfect travel. Yeah. It, it bleeds off. It makes a little shrill when it bleeds off, but it's... Wow. That is something else. Well, because it's hydraulic, you have a single shaft. You don't have the double shaft. Right. So, but you don't need it because it's so fast, you just bring it all the way up, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can bring it up. And is that shaft longer than the OEM Airstream shaft? Um, it probably has more throw. I don't know okay. if it's necessarily any longer, but it probably has more more action, more throw okay. than the, the okay. OEM. All right, so that's... You don't have the benefit of a drop foot on it, so you don't have that okay. drop foot ability on it. It's the foot is there, but, yeah. but you know, so you use blocks and yeah. move on. All right, so then the other big thing is the onboard generator. The onboard generator. 
So this is an Onan 2500. Onan 2500 generator. Well, you're saying it's a 2700, but on propane it's 25. 2800, but it's 25 on propane. Gotcha. I'm gonna raise this up so we can get a good shot of it. You can see it. Okay. That's the rack there. If you catch it from the back back here, you can actually see the generator. And it's 2500 on LP, so they put the 2500 sticker on it to let you know that it's LP. Um, so I'm under here looking at the 2500 watt generator, but the question is if you're gonna put your generator in forward where the spare tire goes, where does the spare tire now go? So there's a spare tire kit that goes right here forward of what tank is that? The front? Uh, that's our fresh water tank. Fresh water tank. Forward of the axle. How far does that sit down from the axle? I mean, not too far. It actually is not any, not any lower than the generator. So it's okay. it's it's not bad at all. It's about even with the bottom of the axle. So you're saying you only do this mod though with a... With a... You have to have a three inch lift. Okay. So, yeah, you gotta have a lift because the generator itself actually sticks down an inch and a half lower than the factory spare does. Okay. So when you go three inches up, you actually still gain an inch and a half of gotcha. clearance under the generator. Let's crank it. Oh yeah, let's. I'm gonna just go to the on position because we're gonna end up assisting because air conditioning. So with the Victron touch screen, yeah. you have the ability to program in different modules. One of the modules you can program in is a generator interface. So you swipe to the side, yeah. there's my generator interface. So this generator's not running right now. All I gotta do is hit start and hit accept. 12 seconds later, the generator will crank. You'll see it spits out water vapor. Okay, yeah. So the byproduct of this generator burning propane is yeah. nitrogen and water okay. uh, condensation. So it'll it'll spit some water until the exhaust gets yeah. so warm that it turns into complete okay. just evaporation. All right, so you're saying it uses a pound of propane an hour. hour. You've got 60 gallons of propane. Well, 60 pounds. 60 pounds. And uh, so that's 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 a long time. Yeah. And I'll you're right, but, that's, but that's on both ACs. That's both ACs. Yeah. Now I'm assisting right now. We'll go look. Let's go look and see what the actual load is. But both air conditioners are running. You can hear it kind of groin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, only one air conditioner is on right now, so it's still running. Look, I've got enough to run the air conditioner and still charge batteries. Yeah. So you got. So is, is the grid 1896? Is that the generator? That's the generator. Because that's the grid at this point. Right. And then we're running um, 1800 is what we need for the AC and the other fan. Yeah. Because I got like the fans to the on position. Because your your fridge is coming off of DC power. Mm -hmm. So 200. that's 200, but that's also the TV's on. Yeah. You're charging. Yeah. All the, all, that's all the USBs coming out of that DC so power. So everything, lights. Right. So that's 1800 on the, on the AC load, 200, so that's 2000. Mm -hmm. And you're bringing in 2000. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's quiet. Yeah, and again, I can feel it. You can feel it a little bit, yeah, in the front. Yeah. You can kind of feel it, but it, but again, we're running. See, now we're running both air conditioners. Yeah. So it, went, it jumped to 2800. Okay. So see, now we're assisting. Yeah. And I'm having to pull, I'm pulling 82 amps out of the battery Yeah. as we do it, but I'm, I'm running both air conditioners. Yeah. I mean, we're running both air conditioners, all the both, lights. It's both 15,000 BTU. No, yeah. 113,000, 115. 15. And we're running, you know, all the lights and the TVs yeah, yeah. and all the things. And then what happens is when the air conditioner cycles off, you know, once the mm -hmm. inter internal temperature's met, then it goes right back to charging the batteries. Yeah. So we've been at Harvest Host and ran the thing for five hours, both air conditioners running and never come off of 100%. You know, it'll, yeah. it'll go. Okay, there's your multi plus two. Mm -hmm. And then a whole bunch of fuses and switches yeah. and... Yeah, so there's a 400 amp hour battery under this board. It's basically the size of a GC3. Okay. It's laying on its side. Gotcha. Flat. And there's another one standing up behind it. Okay. So there's 400 amp hours this way and 400 amp hours that way. Oh, I gotcha. So you got 800 amp hours total. 800 amp hours total. Right. And then this is just the shunt for the battery monitor. Yeah. Uh, th these batteries require uh, an actual um, uh, mechanical locking relay. Okay. So these are my battery disconnects for the BMS system for these batteries. And then I've got a fuse for battery one, a fuse for battery two, the inverter fuse, and then a main DC fuse that feeds out. Gotcha. And then all my other, the solar charge controller and stuff are up here in this front. Gotcha. I mean, it's, this, it's the 2200 X bed slide. It's the yeah. same, you know, it's a full extend. I like it because it pulls all the way out. Yeah. Yeah. I keep all my stuff in there. Traeger, 
Yeah. You guys are Blackstone people, I know. Traeger, drone, dog food, washing machine. Yeah. Which is great. <laughs> Solo stove. Yeah. Bonfire. Yeah. Got the uh, two seven gallon water containers. Yeah. The Dometic. Right. 55 quart ice chest is great. And then yeah. this is the power box, and you can see it's way. It's way over the top kill. It actually has the MPPT control and the BMV 712 yeah. mounted in the box for it. It has a 1200 watt inverter that you can turn on here. Yeah. You need <laughs> AC power. Um, but it powers the, the ice chest. You can see the inside here is, there's the, the setup. So it's got a Phoenix, uh, Victron Phoenix, and it actually has a 30 amp shore power charger. So if this box drained down and I couldn't charge it up with a truck or anything like that, you need to get out of. But you are running 12 volt back from your uh, yes. batteries on yeah, the Yeah, I've got a DC-DC charger in here and it plugs in to the side here of the box. Yeah. So when the truck is running, this is actually charging okay. the battery. The batteries are 99.5 and, and it's been running. Um, and the, then you got Yeti cooler. Well, two Yeti buckets. These buckets are kind of way overkill. They, yeah. But I had two five gallon buckets last year I hauled around and they yeah. kept busting the bottoms out of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I kind of have a unique thing that we can do. Uh, one five gallon bucket is just a five gallon bucket to have for yeah. having a, the, the gray bucket yeah. is my gray water. Get rid of bucket. Really? So I have a, the cap I have on my sewer connection yeah. has the water hose attachment yeah, on it. Yeah, I got the same one. So I can actually take this bucket here, like if we're in a national park, a lot of them have gray water dump sinks or whatever, yeah. like a mop sink. So you can actually drain gray water off of your tank into a five gallon bucket. You, I use the lid because it's got a gasket so it seals. So you put the lid on it, you do that four times and you jump mm -hmm. 20 gallons of water out. There you go, yeah. You can get rid of it, so it works pretty good. And then we're big proponents of always carrying. Yeah, you got to. I even carry though, five gallons extra diesel. For even it. though I got a 60 gallon tank, I, I, I have a five gallon, it's low. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah, yeah. How yeah, right. started with. And, and there's, and, and some of these places we go, you know, you can get in spots to where you're, you have issues. Well, are you going to roll up to a station they don't sell diesel or they're out of diesel or the diesel mm -hmm. pump's broken? That's happened. The bed slide's great with the, with the truck cap. Yeah. So it works well with the truck cap because it uh, um, yeah. you don't lose as much height, yeah. or you gain the height back that you lose in the bed slide. Yeah. And then we've got a ladder in there. I carry the oh, extendable yeah. ladder. Okay. It's strapped to the side of the truck. And, and your fishing poles I see down there too. Yeah, yeah. We got fishing poles and then the tackle box and everything's in the on the bed slide. We just yeah. keep two little spinning reels and. Hi. Oh, your slice of pie. And and Mark's mug. <laughs> Mark's mug. <laughs> <laughs> you get a mug. Hey, for Airstream. That's not even yeah, a it's shot. Yeah, so I have a, <laughs> That's so sad. I have a tiny hand, so I'm going to drink oh, with the, the tiny, tiny hand. Yeah. That's going to be so yes. good. Yes. That's it's always perfect. thinking. It's, it's so perfect. cute. Yes. That's his mug. That's his big yes. taster. Are you married? <laughs> After properly saying goodbye to the Dennis family, we make our way toward Olympic, one of the least visited but most diverse national parks. We stay at Solduck Campground, hike through fog and moss-covered trees, and visit the shorelines of this magical part of the country. Ah! 